So now your goal would be is to get the right glute back. There you go. Now in the, through the sit down phase, there you go. And then now from here, you keep pushing the left one back into the wall. Early extension, Dennis. When the pelvis is thrusting towards the golf ball, yes, right throughout the swing, could be in the back swing they're standing up, mm -hmm. or in the transition, mm -hmm. the pelvis is shifting towards. We see all the pressure get towards the toes. The hand will get thrown out and can lead to sort of a plethora of poor mistakes, right? Yes. So talk to me about what a professional does uh, as a general reference throughout the swing, yes. on average across everyone that you've got in the gear system, mm -hmm. what do we see them do in regards to their posture to reduce this early extension, especially with their backside? Yeah, so one of the things that we'll start to see is, is, is the flexion extension piece, mm -hmm. okay? Yes, there's gonna be some churning involved, but a little bit, it would be the, the depth as well. Mm -hmm. So I generally, like I said, we've kind of talked about the feet, the femurs kind of churned out. Mm -hmm. A little bit of what we'd wanna see is the right ball and socket kind of feel like he'd be moving a little bit more back and around the right ankle, mm -hmm. okay? Now all of a sudden what start, would happen, start to happen is that the right glute starts to move more back from the ball, which then the center of the pelvis moves back. Now, the key is, is not to apply so much churn so fast, because then the right glute kind of moves off of the wall. It's keeping the right glute on there. As you feel like you're gonna go ahead and sit and oh, yeah. work on getting the left glute back on there. Yeah. So when we look at gears in the vertical plane, once the right glute gets on there and yeah. you start to move into the back swing, yeah. poor average, there's always a glute that's on there. Yeah, wow. So through the transition piece, the right glute which kind of still stay on there as they're getting the left one on there. So what starts to happen is, is the ankles and knees would start at, and get they're bent, they're flexed, there's some extension, and then kind of getting into the feeling of trying to jump more mm -hmm. is that from the top of the back swing, as they go down, the knees will start to rebend yep. just a little bit more. So they'll have a little bit more ankle and knee bend. Mm -hmm. Okay, by the time they kind of get to about 5, 5.5. Yeah. And then things start to extend again. But th that does, that gives opportunity for the left glute to get back on there. Yeah. So a lot of what I like to do with players is I hate walls <laughs> when they're doing that because the wall has no give. Yeah. Sure. Right, because again, like the, the the hips are elliptical, right? So now I've got to have some space to go back. But if yeah. I'm up against the wall, the wall pushes me back too much. I like using exercise balls. Okay. Right. right? So the idea behind the exercise ball, once I show people, kind of uh, the gears thing, is that like that would be the the right glute, that would be the left glute. Is that we'd be trying to push a little bit more some pressure into it. Yeah. Yeah. And then he would almost feel like he stays there as the left one gets back on there so that the ball would never fall. Yeah. So if you go ahead and get into your setup, so this works great if you're up against the wall, so I'm not gonna hold this thing, I'm just mm -hmm. gonna kinda keep it just like that. Yep. So now your goal would be is to get the right glute back, there you go. Now in the, through the sit down phase, there you go. And then now from here, you keep pushing the left one back into the wall. Yeah, wow. Now if you did that again, and again, all I have is just my fist, so I'm not trying to hold it up against you. So mm -hmm. if you go to the top of the backswing, and then from four to five, you get that right glute off of the wall, like let your pelvis thrust, he starts to fall. Yeah, and, I, and we could see that so much pressure has gone towards my toe here. This is also where you'll see the pelvis from face on stay back, and then that is the beginning of that motion there, yeah. right? Which mm -hmm. just goes back to forth and what we were talking about of the whole banking of the trial foot in the previous video as well. Now, that feeling of keeping that pelvis back there, Dennis, from the address, and then getting that sensation as I do so, mm -hmm. I have to let my trail leg lengthen for that to happen. Yes, because you've got to get this hip back and around a little bit more. The tailbone really starts working back and around towards the target, and I don't think a lot of people really understand that piece. Yeah, correct. So they start to kind of create early extension right from the get-go. Yeah, and I, I think a very important visualization for players to conceptualize here is about the pelvis being an elliptical, right? Yeah. So if this is our pelvis here, right, it's not perfectly circled, no. which then in that case would kind of stay in the same spot. But if I rotate this, you can see this right side of the pelvis, well, that's shifting back. So that's your right glute. Yeah. The right glute is shifting back 
into that medicine ball, into that wall, yes. which then, and the feeling for me that I feel like I miss out on a lot really is that transition sitting more back down into that lead side. That's why you gotta be careful about trying to turn so quick yeah. from the top, yeah. that back and in. Because as soon as you start to turn, the glute wants to make its way because the elliptical back and around and it creates, it comes right off. Yeah. Then you start getting that pelvis thrusting towards the target. Yeah, because because my habitual pattern over years and years and years, I used to be in the old, keep the trail knee flexed, shift off it. And then mm -hmm. I used to like, my swing direction was so far left because yeah. this was firing out like there's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Sure, I could try and manage something with my hands and arms, but all day, every day, I'm fighting that because yeah. I've been doing it for years and years. So my feeling is that I'm tre creating as much depth as I can in the backswing. Yes. And then for me, it's a very important that I'm feeling this falling motion back. But I think you've just added something in there of I need to be a little bit more aware of that sort of reflexing, oh, flexing, yeah. that reflexing in the lead as my glute pushes back. Yes. Which then will translate that energy back into the ball. There. That also helps with some of the lag pieces. Yeah. Because you've built the arm structure to the top getting not only back into the ankle and knee flexion, mm. but also trying to get a little bit more, get back into forward bend, but gaining more forward bend and keeping the arms locked into the ribcage helps reduce the throw early. Yeah. So as we're kind of sitting at the top, this guy is, is feeling this way. Yeah. And then I can start to kind of fire those arms a little bit more. Yeah, that yeah. just feels, to me, that feels great. There's two pieces that you see that the, the, the Tall players will have a little bit more forward flexion as they kind of got into that piece. So not only do they have a little bit more ankle knee bend, they also have a little bit more forward flexion. Mm. That then allows them, the forward flexion then turns into, you know, a little bit of the opportunity to create more turn and more side bend so you can cover the golf ball better. But again, if you're sitting, again, if we throw out a crazy number, you know, 80 degrees, tour players as they're coming back down, they're going to have a little bit more forward bend mm. at that point because then I need that to kind of turn and side bend. Because again, the, the, the center of the golf swing would be about the lead shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I've got to reduce that distance from where I was to the ground so I don't start to throw it. Because as soon as I start to lengthen this, my pelvis starts to go forward, starts to early extend. My lead shoulder, the length, starts to increase, mm. which enforces me to lengthen my trail arm so I can get the club to the ball. Yeah, so that, that sort of falling, compressing into the ground, yeah. especially that lead, that just... and. All this like, uh, sequence pattern of getting the arms unloading underneath your chest naturally happens as I do so, and shows yeah. the importance of ground reaction force and how you use the ground to create power. Yeah, now you just did a really nice piece, and if you kind of look back, that's that position three I was talking about in one of our earlier videos. See, the elbow is kind of ahead. There's your radial. There's your ulna. Yeah, and then straight away it just feels so easy to then get that back into impact, right? Yeah. So let's say a player has videoed their swing from down the line mm -hmm. and they see that either in the back swing, let's just throw it all together. The player is pushing their pelvis in, right? They obviously need a little bit more depth of rotation, feeling that the right glute is kind of moving back. Yes. Pressure going mm -hmm. more towards the trail heel. A little bit more towards the trail heel. You yeah. feel that you could be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Tap it down. Yeah. And then I, I think that would be relatively easy for players to work on. Yes. But then the next piece I feel like is a big challenge is that what would be a great reference for a player that was, okay, we're in a great spot here, but they're really fighting with this throwing out pelvis going back, right leg going out. From the top of the swing, this reflexing feeling yes. of the lead leg. Yes, and then bo both legs, but trying to feel like the lead knee mm -hmm is gonna kind of get outside the ankle ever so slightly. And when you see this nice relationship that the knee is in front of the ankle and the knee is in front of the hip, but that would have to be a little bit more of a face-on view. Yeah, yeah. But that and would be a great picture and, and reference piece at around that point right there. And just here, like I feel so engaged into the ground, like I would be about to go yeah. for a big so high yeah, jump. You, you look like you work out, right? You work out? Yeah. Okay, right. perfect. So yeah. get into that position again. Okay. Uh, in the swing, though. No. Uh, in the swing? Yeah, but, but stop there again. Okay, so if I sat here and we were able to put a bar mm -hmm. and do, I think they're called squats, right? Mm -hmm. That's how much I work out. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you could do a lot of weight? Yeah. yeah. Now, if you kind of did that again, get to the top and leave that knee kind of kicked in, now could you do a lot of weight? <laughs> Snap my knee. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's a really nice checkpoint at that point. Mm. What is my relationships? Mm. And then if I were to put some weight on me here, like can I, how much can I push? Yeah. And then again, it's the same thing with not only the lead knee, 
with the trail knee. So kick the trail knee in really hard at that point. Now can you squat? No. Does that make sense? So you look at people wanting to be dynamic and athletic, but they got terrible lower body sequencing. Yeah. Right. So that's a great checkpoint getting to this piece. You know, how stable am I? Yeah, how stable am I? So if I'm super stable, I can accelerate. Yeah. Right? I can jump. I can start to use and have the ground help me. Mm. But once I start to get my anatomy out of position where I can't be strong and powerful, I got no chance of hitting a ball really far. And, and let's just talk about if you had a smaller ball, um, nothing too big that you would yeah. separate your legs and you put it between your yeah. legs here, that feeling of from a dress, let's say it's just lightly touching. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of a squeeze here, but then dropping. And then you're going to feel like you're going to, don't let it hit. And then, yeah, don't let it hit. And then, then you're trying to up. squeeze it back again. Yeah, yeah, squeeze it back again, like we kind of talked about with this whole lower body motion in the previous video. That's just a huge power source being utilized yeah. from the ground there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. So tying up on this for the guys at home, when it comes to their practice, if they want to stay in their posture better, not early extend, uh -huh. Simply just starting off with a dry drill feel of yep. taking the golf club out of the hands, being slow and intentional, feeling yep. like the right glute is pushing back into this wall. Yep. Like Dennis said, don't use an actual wall because there's yeah, going to be can. a resistance. You're actually going to start to then just turn around the right hip rather than actually push it back. Then that transition movement as we are then coming in, a yeah. reflexing of both legs, feeling like the lead glute is still very engaged. Mm -hmm. and then that explosive and yeah. this lead hip and this lead glute here, you can see it's still up against the wall, complemented with the tilt, would be in a perfect spot. Yeah, to me, like, uh, the, the exercise ball is, is, is so far the best I've seen um, in, in terms of cleaning that action up in gears. Yeah. A lot of what I would say to the people who really have a lot of early extension would be getting a ball yeah. and then practicing and, and, and movement prep. Yeah. Right, understand how to move, understand the task, understand how the, the legs would have to work, how the, the spine would work. Mm. Just doing that at home, putting the ball up along the wall, yeah, and kind of getting your your setup. Now, um, I, I would say this: like what you don't want, right? Um, I, I'm going to kind of show people because this people will kind of get this wrong a lot. Just mm -hmm. go ahead and set up. Is that again? I'm the wall, right? So mm -hmm. you've kind of backed into the wall. Mm -hmm. What you don't want, mm -hmm. right? Sorry, I'm pushing too much. Don't let me. Yeah, so. You kind of feel like you're already pressed hard into the ball, correct? Yeah, correct, correct, correct. So I wouldn't want that much pressure there. I Should would just be want, lightly. Sitting. Yeah, so we'd have to adjust ourselves so that it's ever so slightly because if you thrust towards the golf ball, ever so, it's gone. It's gone, yeah. But you can cheat it. Do that again. Yeah. I'm going to press Quite hard into pressed, you now. Because then if I thrust it, then it's still, still not falling. Still, yeah. So you've created some thrust and it gives you this false component of, oh, I'm doing it right. Yeah. So when you're setting up, we want the lightest of light pressure, mm. okay, on the ball. Mm. And then I've got to go increase pressure into the ball. Increase, yeah. Yeah. So light, and that, that would be the same as what I was referring to before about the ball between your legs. You wouldn't want to try and squeeze it just for the sake of it. Yeah. You would just have it lightly sitting there. But yeah. That one right there is, is perfect. And we're going to throw some um, visuals up on the, the screen here of a tour player with their backside up against a, a glass pane so yes. you can see what their glutes are working on and you're going to talk us through that but i'm just going to set up here and i'm just going to get a feeling of that especially for me after i've got to the top of the swing i'm transitioning down into the lead glute and then feeling it kind of stay up against that let's move that into a swing perfect and even from there i just felt my sequence at the top of the swing get better and better yeah awesome awesome my friend Cheers. okay so we're looking at the tour average model mm -hmm. okay from behind you can see that there's a nice little window plane of glass so people can, in your video, you're putting a line back there. So if we get from that behind picture, you can see that the little bit of the left glute is on the wall. Okay, so we're starting at setup. As we start to kind of move into the back swing, you can see how quickly the right glute starts to get into the wall. And you keep seeing that it keeps increasing. This is what I mean about the ball and then the glutes kind of not already being plastered into the ball. Yeah. So we'd want to feel very light touching. And then we'd want to keep in the back swing that right glute feeling like it keeps pressing and pressing and pressing into the ball. So when we start to kind of look at it again, as we start to move through this, you can see it. There it is there. And you can see it gets all the way into the hamstring. It's crazy how much. Yeah. And then as they start to transition, you can see because that right glute and that hip created some depth in the back swing, 
by the trail leg extending, okay, that's what you see right there, okay? And then as we start to kind of move and get it get into that sit-down position, you can start to see it transfers from the right glute to the left glute. That's about at P5. Then we start to get down to about P6. You can see how much thrust is moving back. And then when we kind of get into impact, 